Hey everyone, as a GM, I'm constantly on the lookout for new tools to add to my GM toolbox. And the tool I want to show you today comes from Low Fantasy Gaming. Now, Low Fantasy Gaming is an awesome system. It was something that I was actually playing before I picked up ICRPG, and I refer back to it constantly for ideas and inspiration. The tool, though, that I want to show you comes from how they do their monsters. If you look at a monster stat block in low fantasy gaming, it's a really clean, simple, you know, set of data, but included is a nat 19 feature. And a nat 19 feature is essentially a special effect that happens when a monster rolls a natural 19. Now I love this idea. I love that they've included something uh, that happens when a monster rolls really high and it's something that I thought was really easy to start implementing. But as I started using it and I thought about it more, I realized that this tool didn't have to be limited to just a 19. It could become something much more flexible and much more dynamic. And so I want to jump over to the desk and show you some examples of how I've turned the nat 19 into what I like to call critical effects and how I prep them into my ICRPG monsters. All right, now that we're back at the desk, let's take a closer look at that low fantasy gaming stat block. We've got a gelatinous cube here, and we've got all of its basic stats. And right here in the middle is that nat 19 effect. And what it says is the target, when the gelatinous cube rolls a natural 19, the target is sucked into the cube, and the player gets a deck save to resist. I really like this as an effect because it gives me something to play off of without going into too much detail. It allows me to highlight the gelatinous cube in a fun way, especially when it rolls high. Like what's what's the most dangerous thing about this cube? Well, getting sucked in and, you know, dissolved by the thing over a period of hours. Um, but what would happen if we were to expand that out and to do something different with these um, on some ICRPG monsters? Starting with the flimes. So our flimes, we've got some basic Bonuses, bites, elemental dwellers, you know, divide and destroy. They've got some really fun effects, and they're a really fun kind of monster to swarm players with. But what would happen if a monster like a slime would roll a nat 20? So what I do is, when I'm prepping my monsters, I'll add in this crit notation along with the number that they naturally roll. And so flimes crit on a nat 20. So in addition to ultimate, what happens is say, you know, they're pretty bitey. So maybe what they do is they uh, break target weapon, okay? That's in addition to damage and in addition to the ultimate, the effect that happens is they break the target's weapon. And this kind of highlights that they're gonna just latch onto their stuff and break it, but only on a nat 20. So this makes uh, a narrative addition to just the damage die of rolling weapon plus ultimate. Okay, but then what about a gargolith? Okay, what what could a gargolith do when they crit? They're a little bit more powerful. They've got a few more abilities. Um, so perhaps what I could do is when I write out crit, I could say instead of just a twenty, they get eighteen, nineteen and 20 is when the crit effects happens, but only on the 20 is ultimate added because we're still following basic ICRPG rules. So for Gargolith, I'm looking at it, trying to find some inspiration, crushing beak, wave surge, storms, but I'm also looking at the art and he's breaking stuff. So maybe when the Gargolith rolls a natural 18, 19 or 20, whatever action they're taking, um, it breaks terrain, you know, near, around, uh, to target. So if they're, if the target that he's attacking is at the bow of the ship, then as he rolls, say, a natural 18, he's going to do his normal attack, whether, whether it's tentacles or crushing beak or wave surge, but the near area to the, the target breaks. And now I can include things like, you know, do people make a deck save to, to dodge out of the way? Do they make it, um, does it make it impassable terrain? Does it kind of include things like that? And so I've added, a, you know, an effect 
rather than just extra damage unless they roll a nat 20. So that keeps 20s being scary, but also provides new ways to make monsters a little bit more dynamic than just rolling damage dice and doing their basic actions. Plus I can kind of emphasize my, my narrative a little bit more with these effects. But let's look at one more, the big baddie, our big black drake. Now he's he's going to be definitely our mo boss monster, definitely similar to uh, the Gargolith. So I'm going to give him a, a crit range of 18, 19, and 20. Now obviously I can go whatever range I want, but the more dice uh, they roll, the more often this effect is going to come into play. But So I like keeping it to 18, 19, and 20 um, if I'm going to kind of as my max. But for a dragon, what would be a fun effect? And I'm kind of using the stats already to inspire and kind of the narrative of what I'm thinking I would do for a Black Drake. He's got a bunch of fun attacks there. He's lots of actions, uh, healing, immune to fire, wrath. Now that might be a good one. So wrath and rage. Uh, maybe, maybe for him, he whenever he rolls an 18, 19, or 20, you know, he adds fury to it and. Now what I do is double uh, roll bonuses next round, just for one round. So if he rolls an 18, 19, 20 on one round, the next round, his rolls, instead of a plus 5, are going to be plus 10 for one round. And so that's, that's insane, the awesome, but it also kind of, you can highlight and add that to the narrative that as he's getting pumped up as he's fighting, he adds his fury, and now you're kind of having this extra bonus for one round and the players get to react to it. And so this crit effect, I really enjoy because it allows me to modify these monsters in a little bit different way, keep the stats um, as simple as possible, but also highlight something that I want to do ahead of time when he starts rolling some big numbers. Plus, this is a really fun way to include uh, extra bonuses or extra effects from like the monster maker set. So let me, so like if you want to include different ways of bending the rules, you trap them, repel them, hit targets. These features in the monster maker portion of master edition and core is a great way to include them as crit effects to then kind of bend the rules and twist your monster rather than just adding more hearts and higher stats you give them a special effect whenever they roll high. And it only comes up when it rolls high, so you can rely on it coming up only occasionally and not hold back. But yeah, that's essentially crit effects, all inspired uh, by Low Fantasy Gaming's Nat 19. And so if you decide to use this, I use them in a lot of my monsters. If you decide to use them, um, don't hold back try to come up with fun effects that you can include different ranges, different ways to twist things um, to highlight those monsters. And it really helps me understand and prepare what do I do in, rather than just rolling you know, a couple extra damage die. All awesome. I wanna have a, have a little bit more.